Thanks, Clive, and uh, welcome everyone to the uh, to the new financial year's first uh, presentation. So, Tour and Partners are very proud uh, event sponsors of FNN, and we like um, yeah, coming on here every every time and talking about the markets and introducing some exciting young growing companies. So, I'm just going to spend the next five or ten minutes giving a little bit of a background um, or a backdrop, if you like, to to investment markets with a focus, you know, pretty primarily on the Aussie equity market. So we're right slap in the middle of reporting season at the moment. Um, as many of you will know, Aussie companies tend to report interim results um, uh, in January, February, and sort of full year results in, in July, August. <clears throat> Unlike US companies who report every quarter. So imagine what this is like every every three months over there. But it's so far so good. Uh, there is a tendency of, of um, companies who report early in reporting season to report slightly better numbers and um, companies that have bad numbers to report tend to delay them. So you usually get this euphoria at the start of every reporting season, and then we wait for the wait, we wait for the landmines to to blow up in the last week or two. So no difference this time. Results out from Aussie companies are pretty strong. Analysts are upgrading near term earnings. Um, they're just a little bit uh, nervous about upgrading longer term earnings, and there's two reasons for that. Um, one is just the lack of guidance from management. So we had a period uh, last year where there was no guidance being provided because it was very difficult for companies to look into the future and provide any sort of um, guidance to analysts. And in doing so, you can get yourself into trouble. Like if you if you guide uh, incorrect numbers to the market, you can get yourself in a little bit of trouble. So I think boards were erring on the side of caution and not providing any guidance. So analysts were sort of left, um, you know, sticking their finger in the air. We then had, when once we started to come out of lockdown and the vaccine was announced, companies were a bit more emboldened and we did see guidance. We're now sort of going back into a period where guidance is being taken away and that's just a, an area of concern. So the, mar the market thinks we're 18 months, two years into this virus, surely now companies have got a better handle on trading conditions, but that's proving not to be the case. So a number of large companies not providing guidance. So that's made it analysts okay to upgrade this year's earnings because we've seen the numbers. But in terms of next year, so what you've got is it looks like earnings growth is slowing. So if we look at 12 month forward earnings estimates for the market and divide them by 12 months trailing, that's a usual, usually historically a good signal on, on profit momentum in the economy. And you can use that to trade the market. So when it's rising, obviously expectations are growing and you can stay along growth assets. If it's falling, then you can get, get a bit more defensive and remove growth assets. So right now we've got a very clear signal that earnings growth is slowing, but that is primarily, we think, due to the lack of visibility around forward earnings and analysts not moving. So we've seen this phenomenon in the US market with the quarterly numbers. Analysts are only changing the near-term quarter. They're not changing the forward numbers. So the market is starting to look very, very expensive on earnings. So on forward 12-month earnings, the Aussie market's on about 16 times, 17 times which doesn't look too expensive. The US market's on something like 25 times, but it's just got to be a little bit cautious with those numbers because A, the US analysts aren't upgrading earnings as much as they otherwise would be because of the lack of guidance. And Australia, our PE is being manipulated lower by iron ore stocks. So on forward earnings, iron ore stocks are on six and a half times earnings, which is a very, very low number. But obviously those forward earnings are set on an iron ore price that's probably a little bit higher than what it's trading at today. So there's a view that iron ore is not going to stay above $100, let alone $200 a tonne. And so as those prices come down, those profits will come down and those PE ratios will go up. So from a fundamental perspective, it's difficult to value the market right now because we're not clear on earnings. So what that means is companies that are clear on earnings or uh, that have business models that are very predictable, they will tend to get better prices, better PE ratios. So you get a flight to defensive sort of stocks in this sort of environment. So if you're a cyclical business or a business that's reliant on reopening, such as travel or tourism, then the market's just going to be a little bit more cautious with your stock than, and, than if you're a predictable company. So that's why companies like Woolworths, West Farmers, those stocks are on 30 times earnings because investors are very um, confident in the profitability, whereas, as I said, you know, Fortescue, BHP, Rio, more like five or six times earnings. So that's what you get in this market. So um, just a few things to be aware of there in terms of valuation. So some other things to think about. One is obviously monetary policy. So 
the central banks around the world are printing about $1 billion an hour of new money. So it's about 8.4, 8.5 trillion US dollars on an annualized basis, which is unprecedented in history. And obviously that rate of uh, money production is going to lead to inflation if it doesn't uh, stop sometime. So the, you know, the focus now is on what the central banks do to taper that quantitative easing or that money printing. So we, we should get an indication this weekend. Uh, the Fed has its annual Jackson Hole retreat. It'll be held virtually this year uh, for the second year in a row. And the governors will spend a couple of days discussing monetary policy, but more importantly, how and when are they going to remove the $120 billion a month of uh, quantitative easing that they're doing? And that will then set the scene for other quantitative easing programs around the world, including the Reserve Bank, to change this as well. So keep, keep your eyes peeled over the weekend for comments from, um, from Jerome Powell. Everyone will be watching that this weekend. And the final point I'd just like to talk about is M&A activity. So mergers and acquisitions activity. So we've had a situation for over 18 months now where interest rates have been incredibly low and even retail investors or retail um, uh, you know, uh, house owners have been able to lock in sub 2% interest rates on their mortgage. So it's been a period of very, very low funding costs, but a lot of companies have just been wary to uh, take advantage of those low borrowing costs because of the uncertain economic outlook. So what we saw in 2020 was a lot of balance sheet repair a lot of equity raising, a lot of debt raising, but not a lot of activity. What we're seeing this year is that companies are getting a lot more comfortable in doing deals. So we've seen in the past couple of days, you know, massive changes to the energy sector. We've seen Ampol bidding for Z Energy in New Zealand. We've seen Woodside and BHP get together with petroleum. We've seen Santos bidding for oil search. So just in one sector, you've seen three mega deals. And we're, we're just seeing things like Square buying Afterpay, for example. There's just a lot, a lot of deals. In fact, I think this quarter has seen a record number of transactions and it does look like there's more to come. So lots of activity going on. So in a nutshell, you know, we still like the market. We're less positive on it than we were. Um, we need to watch what central banks are doing. We need to watch M&A activity. So we're sort of um, neutral on Aussie equities. We have been bullish from pretty much last year, but we're just seeing a little bit of slowing in global growth, probably some prudent time to to look at some profits. Anyway, I hand it back to you, Clive, and look forward to uh, to listening to today's speakers. Thank you.